that we are not really agreeing with each other because it is well documented and we will, we will help you with the documentation after lunch so that we don't waste time now. That Mr. Mudisi's idea of getting the BAE... Mr. Hoffman, can I get to the next point? The witness clearly says that those meetings where Mr. Mudisi was chairing, he was not present, he does not know what, oh, what went on there. He was sitting as a chairperson of the interministerial committee. He can talk about, uh, about what happened at that committee. This, this is what I sent the witness to be saying. So whether you give him other documents or not, I'm not quite sure how that is going to help. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Let's do it this way. Do you agree with me, Mr. M uh, Mr. Mbeki, that it would be wrong to leave cost out of account in weighing a bid of this nature? Chairperson, I don't understand that. <clears throat> What I've said is the, the, only, the only reason I said before that there's no point at which the interministerial committee considered any, anything which, without in, uh, addressing the matter of cost, Not naturally, because you've got to pay for it. So it was no possibility to sit and discuss, take decisions w without having to answer the question, well, then how much, um, how much are you going to pay for this? I think it's a straightforward issue. I, I can't remember. I, I don't know, unless I'm being a bit stupid. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Perhaps you could explain a bit better. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Mbeki, I'm sure you're not really stupid. But we're on a sensitive issue here. The blood pressure of Mr. Irwin behind you has gone up several levels. And I want you... To, 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 to apply your mind to what I'm putting to you now carefully. Uh, just, just hold on. That is uncalled for. I'm concerned for his health. Mr. Hoffman, can you please only concentrate on what we are supposed to, uh, to be doing? Mr. Owen is not one of the witnesses that, will, uh, that we are called today. Yes. Mr. Mbeki, it goes like this. And I have to put it to you as being part of the case of the people who complain about the arms deal. That Joe Medici decided, because he wanted the Hawks and the Gripen so badly, that cost had to be just forgotten about when this procurement took place. Now, either uh, that happened or... At what didn't. level are you referring to... Uh, 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 Mr. Hoffman, it's I also don't understand the question. Mr. Mudisi was involved at a departmental level as a Minister of Defense, and he was chair of various committees. He was also a member of, of cabinet, a member of the interministerial committee. The former state president says that he was sitting as a chairperson of the interministerial committee. Now, when you say Mr. Mudisi made that statement, at what level did he make the statement, so that we can also understand the question properly? My instructions are that it was made in the context of giving an instruction to the team that was evaluating the purchase of aircraft. So those instructions is what he, has, he, he gave them out at a departmental level? That's how I understand the position, yes. Thank you. Mr. Former President, do you know what Mr. whether Mr. Molise gave those instructions to his department or not? No, Chairperson, I don't. Indeed, as you've indicated, I've, I've said this already, that we didn't sit in at meetings of uh, departmental meetings. Uh, the Minister Molise might very well have said all the things that you say he said in, within the department, but we sat as an interministerial committee uh, and this matter did not come to the ministerial committee uh, of, of something which is not costed. Or because, Mr. Mbeki, you appreciate that it would be illegal and unconstitutional and invalid to leave cost out of consideration, don't you? You understand that that's wrong. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I this this I don't I con honestly don't understand, Chairperson, what we are doing. 
I keep explaining <coughs> that at no point did we as the Interministerial Committee consider anything without taking cost into account. Exactly because we're conscious of our responsibilities with regard to, to that particular matter, uh, uh, with regard to cost. Now, I'm being asked a question about legality and illegality and so on. Uh, <clears throat> sure, of course it will be illegal. Uh, but I'm saying that the very action we took exactly means that, that we had to discharge certain responsibilities and, and as, 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 as cabinet committee, we then, we then did what we had to do. As you have very correctly in your summary conceded, the cabinet in South Africa is collectively responsible for what cabinet ministers do, and if a cabinet minister invents a visionary approach that leaves costs out of account, then he is doing something that is deeply, darkly, unconstitutional and invalid. And let me, in, in, in the interest of giving you the opportunity to answer the question in an informed way, let me just refer you to the bits of the Constitution that count. And Mr. Mr. Hoffman, get on with the questions. We all know what the Constitution is saying. The former president, he knows what the Constitution is saying. Put, well, put your question to him. My question is, how can it ever be cost effective as required by section 217 of the Constitution, if you have a system in place put there by Joe Medici that says leave cost out of account when you're buying these aeroplanes. Thank you. You don't have to answer that. Let's get to the next question. He said to you that he doesn't know what Mr. Minister did uh, at the departmental level. If this is the evidence that you are going to give, then you can argue the question of constitutionality at the later stage. We haven't reached that stage as yet. Can we get to the next question? I would prefer not to, Mr. Commissioner, because the witness was prepared to answer and you stopped him from answering. And I believe that his answer is critical to whether... we are participating in a farce or whether we are trying to get to the truth. That's Mr. Hoffman, can you just be careful with their language? Can you be careful with their language? You say that the former, uh, Mr. Mayran? Uh, Chair, uh, we would like the, our learned colleague to withdraw that statement, participating in a farce. That is contemptuous of, of this commission. Yes, Hoffman? I'm not prepared to, uh, to, to re retract that statement until such time as I have 13 answers from you, Mr. Commissioner. In relation Mr. Hoffman, to your if you don't stop talking about that, we are busy in a commission now. The witness is before, uh, is before us. If you thought that it was a fuss, what do you want here now? Be because we are talking about you cross-examining a particular witness, you go back to what happened uh, uh, sometime last month, and even at the beginning when we started, this is what you also did. You then referred to the incident where you came to the office in the evening, wanted to see me alone, and I refused. Now, I see you are doing exactly the same thing. At the moment, we are talking about whether the question that you put to this particular witness, whether it's a fair question or, or whether it's a question that will assist us or not. Can we try and uh, uh, restrict yourself to dealing with the questions of, of, of the witnesses before us? Uh, Mr. Commissioner, with the greatest of respect, I have to insist that that question is a question It goes to the heart of, of what has happened here. If we have bought aeroplanes... Uh, just hold on. Price, can I perhaps suggest that if you want to, can you rephrase the question? Yes, I'll rephrase the question. Just, just, just try and do that. Let's see if uh, other witnesses will be in a position to... I'm trying to take... I, I know that, you're, you, you, uh, that uh, Mr. Commissioner, that you're impatient in relation to 
reiterating what the law is. But the, the point is that our law requires that a system of procurement using public money <laughs> insists that cost effectiveness is a criterion and that if cost effectiveness is just wiped off the table, that the contract that flows from that is invalid. It falls to be struck down by a court of law because it is not consistent with the Constitution. And the witness has, 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 has been fair so far. I'm trying to see whether South Africa can be 70 billion rand better off because you, Mr. Commissioner, come to the conclusion that there was a contract here that did not comply with, with uh, procurement requirements. And if there is a contract here that does not comply with procurement requirements because a minister said, forget about the cost, we're going to do the, the BAE Hawk Saab deal, whatever the cost, because we are, are, are adopting a visionary approach, then something not uh, criminal, not bribery, not malfeasance, but a simple mistake in a new government in relation to what is meant to be done when you spend public money in a big way. And this was the biggest procurement ever in South Africa. Mr. Hoffman, can you rephrase the question? My, le le my question to, 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 to um, uh, Mr. Mbeki is a very simple one. Do you agree with me that it would be unconstitutional to leave cost out of account when you are required to do by law, by the Constitution, to take cost effectiveness into account in your system of procurement? That's my question. Uh, Chairperson, <clears throat> the Interministerial Committee, which made recommendations to Cabinet, made recommendations to Cabinet that this is what we should do. Cabinet accepted those. Both those committees, both, at, at those, both of those committees, at no stage, considered these matters without taking into account cost. And I'm sure the uh, 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 Cabinet then, as I'm sure all of us here now are, uh, we are very familiar with what the Constitution says about these matters. Thanks. Mr. Mbeki, I, I have to tell you that when you were being led by my learned friend for the Commission, you, you talked about the excessive cost of the Hawks and you suggested that the Hawks were a better bet anyway because they fitted in better with the SAAF requirements, which is exactly the opposite of what I've put to you here where they said they would prefer to have the Aero Mackey because it works better in South Africa. And now we sit with these aeroplanes in boxes, nobody to fly them, no fuel to put them in the air, doing less than 100 hours a year. Mr. Mbeki, I beg you, think about it. What have we done? What has your cabinet done? You Mr. Hoffman, I'm not going to allow you to go on in that particular way. If Fair you want enough, to put your no, question yeah. to the witness, make a, propo a proposition to the witness and let the witness uh, answer. You can't make a very long statement. At the end of the day, I also end up not understanding what the question is. And I'm sure even the witness ends up not understanding what the question is. I, I apologize. I'm, uh, uh, I'm due for my next poll quite clearly. But, but the... the no, just hold on. You know, Mr. Hoffman, I think it will help a great deal if you were to look at the record of the evidence left so far. It will help a great deal if you were to look at the record of the evidence left so far, especially around those matters you are talking about. It will help a great deal. 
I'm afraid that the evidence that has been led thus far is part of a cover-up, and I don't believe it. That's the problem about looking at that evidence. F is that those witnesses were not challenged. Their testimony was never challenged. And that is because I've come here today to not deal with minions, but to ask the man who was in charge what's going. We've got limited capacity, we've got no funding, and we're here to ask the man in charge to answer for the collective responsibility which, you, which uh, Mr. Commissioner, you know about because you know Section 92 of the, of, of the Commission. We are not a, a big fat organization that can afford to send large teams of people such as those sitting on my left here day after day. It's impossible. What we have to do is use what we've got as best we can. And, and what concerns me is that Mr. Mbeki looks stricken at the moment. I'm not happy about what's happening here because 35 billion rand on aircraft that we've never used except for a Mr. Hoffman, just so you have repeated that statement so many times this morning. Let me, Commissioner Musa wanted to say something before you finish it. You see, I'm raising this because a lot of, of your questions don't seem to have, to have any re relevance to what has been led before this commission. A lot of evidence has been led around those issues you are talking about. And if you had cared to read the record, you would be in a better position to ask even better questions leading to the very same matters you are raising now. Uh, I think we are going to take the lunch agenda. Probably oh, when we come back after lunch, we might be in a position to do slightly better than we are doing up to now. Former President? Uh, Chairperson, no, I don't want, I'm not disagreeing with what you say. <clears throat> but I must say, uh, Chairperson, I'm, I'm really quite angry at uh, uh, Mr. Hoffman. <clears throat> talking about my colleagues here as minions. These are not minions. They might be minions in his eyes. But I don't know if this entitles him to, to making statements like this. Pray privately, maybe he might want to say so. But I think it's very, very offensive, uh, Chairperson. Thanks. So, Hoffman, do you want to say anything to, to, when, to what has been when, said? When, when I was, uh, in, in fairness to, to Mr. Mbeki, when I was referring to minions, I was referring to the staff of the uh, National Defence Force that has uh, taken up a, ve a, a great deal of time here. I was not referring to his cabinet colleagues, and if he thought I was referring to his cabinet colleagues, I, I apologize and withdraw. It was very um, ambiguous to put it that way, and um, clearly uh, duly elected cabinet ministers are people of stature and, uh, and people who deserve the respect of the public, but they are also people who are, are constrained by the requirements of the Constitution and cannot do as they please. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. I, I didn't thought that you were going to make a lot.